Hello everyone, welcome to the podcast, the only podcast that has ever existed and will ever exist. So happy that you found it. Today on the podcast we have Elizabeth Moore, the feisty, the fierce Elizabeth Moore. She's a writer, she's a singer, and she's an actor. All around amazing person, one of my closest friends. But enough of me rambling. Without further ado, welcome to the station. Let's have a conversation. Okay. Hello, everyone. Hello. We have Elizabeth, like, in the studio this time. Hi, everyone. We have her here. Hi. So, as I said before, I mean, I kind of recapped a little bit of who you are and what you've been doing, but basically, you're a comedic and a dramatic actor. Thank you. are also a strong singer. I took, like, a bunch of notes when I was sitting down, like, just bored one day. So, you're a dramatic actor and a very talented uh, singer as well. You may have heard of one of Liz's most awarded accomplishments uh dimitri jayfrick and the honest and goodness truth who i the, i actually acted in and it was so fun awesome endlessly fun <laughs> um i'm glad you enjoyed yourself but as i was sitting down and i was getting ready for this episode i kind of thought about things so the first question that i wanted to ask you was <laughs> what made you want to become a writer Ooh, okay um i feel like i always knew that i wanted to be a writer when i was little i would make like little stories like before i could write i would take cardboard and i would glue it together and i would write like like with little pictures and stuff and i always told my mom that i wanted to be an author when i grew up so i don't think there was like ever a particular moment i was just something like i always knew and i like remember the first story i wrote it was about a girl um, who had a rash, and that was the whole story. It, it was once upon a time there was a girl who had a rash, and that was a, <laughs> that was, that was it. the whole thing. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> and did you was that the first story that you actually like wrote down yeah or that was that, yeah, <laughs> oh. i think so it so. was about myself <laughs> wow this is so great <laughs> this is so deep <laughs> um <But> yeah <laughs> so you started with almost like comic booking kind of i guess i guess so it was like kind of pic like i would do like pictures and stuff like shapes kind of stuff and then i like okay. when i could write i could actually i like actually wrote down stuff i don't know oh okay yeah i guess that counts <laughs> that, no that counts i'm just that like just wasn't what i was no yeah you, it wasn't actually like it was i would like actually create books and then i would like add stories in i don't know oh that's really cool yeah i guess so <laughs> yeah so how does like, if you look back on the stuff that you've... I just hit my mic stand. Nice. If you look back on the stuff that you, like, used to write and you look at the stuff today, what's the biggest, like, shift um, that you've made? I feel like... Well, do you Over mean, your, like, like, career. <laughs> yeah. Do you, you mean stories that. that I did, like, when I was little or, like, middle school or, like, early... When you started to write for, like, for real. Okay. I'd say, honestly, I feel like I haven't been writing that long, so I don't even know if I've gotten that much better. But I feel like, I don't know, I feel like the biggest shift is I've taken it more seriously than, like, I mean, you said since I started, but I yeah. really, like, didn't expect to do anything with it. Like, when I would write in early, early high school and, like, later middle school, I just, like, wrote for myself. And then I, like, realized okay. that... I don't know that I can You realize actually. like where you could go with it? Yeah. And then also I feel like I I've gotten better in like structure wise too cuz I've I like tried to teach myself from YouTube videos about character development and structure and stuff so I'd hope that like yeah. all of that got better too. Oh, well Yeah. Well, now that you say that it shows and once again Dimitri Jevak that yeah. It shows perfectly like the structure and character development there. Thank Which by the way, you. if you haven't seen that, what are you doing? <laughs> There's like what are you doing with your life, people, if you haven't seen that? Um That's funny you say that because I think there's no way that you can see it now. <laughs> like absolutely no way. That was it. It's well, you know what? I'll put on a one act play. Yeah. Just Perfect. on the on the show for April Fools one day. Like that'll just be the entire episode. Um I'd love that, honestly. <laughs> okay. So do you ever feel like what you've written now 
isn't good enough like even with yes, a final product like course. dimitri are you still like as you watched it go on stage and as you watched it develop and grow up as as a little child yeah. <laughs> um did you feel like oh i could have added a line there yes. or like i could have done this or I could have done that because i i know that like if i ever listen back to like my music mm-hmm. i always look back to like the production phase of it mm-hmm and even songs that I've already released, I'm still tinkering with, like adding like la la's in places or harmonizes. Yeah, or something. I definitely so. feel like there's. I mean, as you probably know, feel too. Like as an artist, you're never really done with the art that you're working on, um, even when you like. Yeah. Sit, yeah, exactly. But there's a few like characters that I don't even think are fully developed. Not going to name names but louise i feel like could have been (laughs) (laughs) not going to name names but louise (laughs) i felt there was kind of in my head there like all of the characters were and still are pretty fleshed out but i feel like she was the one that felt like a little bit like it could have she could have had a little bit more layers in her i don't know i don't know if i should put that out but yeah and then well that's not like a hit to the person yeah yeah no portraying them yeah, that was no, just like she did a great job yeah shout out to uh lovely sarah hi sarah <laughs> hi sarah um so what what's the biggest change that you would make to louise um or what's the biggest character development if you sat down for like however long it took i feel like there i just feel like i don't I wrote some motivations in her um, of like what she did for actions that I feel like I never quite understood myself, which I feel like is not the best. I don't know. I feel like I such as uh, like hmm, I'm trying to think there was one particular thing she did. Oh, her whole relation past relationship with Jamal. It yeah, the fact that they broke up, I still I had I wrote in a reason um, of why they did. But I still like it doesn't really make sense to me exactly what like what went down. Like I have different theories, but they change kind of. I don't know. Okay. I'm gonna explore that a little bit. <laughs> uh, what's your what's the biggest like conspiracy theory on why? <laughs> okay, well Louise and Jamal ended things. I'm trying to remember. It's been a long time since I read it. So my because i originally i wrote in that he like emotionally cheated on her with judy okay so like i think it's written in that like she he basically like lost feelings for louise yeah but my conspiracy is that just like i feel like louise was never into it i don't know that's my take that's like my conspiracy is that she just like liked him but Hmm. like was I felt like, I don't know, that Louise just never really felt like, um, like, what's the word? I'm trying to think. Just felt really like she was into the relationship? Well, no, or? that she was not, oh, crap. I mean, like, we can look at the scene. I guess. Yeah. <laughs> I have the entire script of Dimitri. Those with emergency forms that I never filled out. Oh yeah, um, that she just like always wanted more. What did never felt like she, she like felt like she was settling almost. Like she just like I don't know yeah. something like that. I mean Jamal literally opens the he opens the show basically by saying, yeah. "Louise, I don't love you anymore. I'm sorry, but something's come up." And she responds Which with, is "So dumb. <laughs> something's <laughs> come up." <laughs> <laughs> and she responds with fine do what you want i'm no longer your responsibility yeah i just feel like it's not just him i feel like she's also just like not i don't know not as into it hmm. okay we might come back to that okay we might come back okay so the next question um so uh, we kind of already went into this because you're never really done with a uh work but yeah what's the main reason why you think like if you look at a fine at a not even a final copy but like a first draft or something what's the main main reason why your brain goes to this isn't good enough um i have a few reasons um the first one would be that 
sometimes when I'm writing a first draft, I literally don't have coherent sentences written in. Like, I was writing something the other day um, for something else I'm working on, and I went back and read it and realized what I wrote didn't actually make any sense. <laughs> like, I read it, I was like, is this even a sentence? And it wasn't. <laughs> so that's, like, the number one. Because, <laughs> like, my brain is thinking so fast, like, I can't keep up with what I'm thinking, and I just, like, kind of yeah. write down random words, and it just doesn't work. <laughs> so that's, like, the first one. Okay. And then also... <laughs> I, um kind of along with that i feel like it just things take a while to click up with each other like yeah you have to like kind of write the first draft and then r- go back and read it and then see like what's wrong with how like it, it just it needs to like be smoothed out almost it's like kind of rough around the edges so you just kind of have to like go back to make sure that you find where it wants to go i guess I yeah know. i i mean uh, the analogy that I just thought of when you said that was like, it's meant sound kind of like off topic or whatever, but like when people, when you see people that like make these clay like pots. Yeah. First you start out with this like lumpy mess of an idea. Yeah. You put it down on a spinner and you have to really exactly. craft it very diligently to get mm-hmm. your final product. But yeah. So what do you do to like, combat that idea of this isn't good enough um i just keep working on it i guess until i feel like i don't know i just like well i sometimes i'll put it away for a while and then i'll come back with it with fresh eyes and just like keep working on it and i guess like i feel like with dimitri like although i know it's like not perfect i do feel like at peace with it even though i know there's like it could be better because i feel like it's time to like move on i guess it's just knowing when to leave it even it though it's never gonna be like perfect so when can you reach that point like if, if your brain has a mentality of this isn't good enough when do you reach the point that you're like okay it's it's decent enough to go into production um sometimes uh i'd say time limits so Dimitri, I finished probably like the night before that I was supposed to turn it in to my to Morgan to read. So I'd say that. <laughs> so how long have you been had you been working on Dimitri? Like three years? Um, I think that you said e- it might have actually been it was since uh freshman year, um, February vacation. And then Okay it went all the way to junior i actually think that's only two but it was like two and a half maybe i'd say about that much all right Hmm. so so during that entire time you were just thinking like it's not good enough it's not good enough it's not good yeah like i need to keep revising this yeah there was probably like 10 to 15 plus drafts what was the what did the original draft look like? Like what did what was the original name of Dimitri J. Pick and the Honest to Goodness um, Truth? Or what was the original like premise? So that's so funny to think about for me. Um the I actually the original name I came up with Dimitri J. Pick and the Honest to Goodness Truth, the whole name, um, like late like very, very late in the process. And I just okay. called it like nineties sitcom as a working title. Um, so some old drafts have that. And then actually there was, um, I cut out probably, I'm trying to say like five or six characters from the original. Yeah. Who were they? (laughs) So there was. Give us like three. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So, um. I don't want you to have to list out every (laughs) single character. I, I probably, no, I probably couldn't. The, there was a plot line that um involved louise's mom and an ex-lover okay. who, who was a rock star and there was a plot line where louise's mom got pregnant and never told louise what <laughs> and then she had a baby at the end of the show oh my god <laughs> yeah <laughs> and it was the ex-lover was the father but like she kept it on the her whole relationship on the dl from louise that's <laughs> <laughs> that's was, such like a huge plot line to I cut. Know. <laughs> oh I just God. felt like <laughs> that. I mean, 
to be honest, yeah. out how I'm looking at it right now, that would make no sense exactly. whatsoever. <laughs> because if like your mother in the span of time that like one show is what, it was like a couple of days. Yeah. So if your mother was like nine months pregnant yeah. and Louise was just like She's probably just putting on some weight. <laughs> like, <laughs> it was it was actually originally written in the nine months. So it made it, oh, okay. it was written. Okay. In. <laughs> so it made yeah. sense. But like it's <laughs> still ridiculous as heck. <laughs> okay, number two. Um Dimitri had <clears throat> two like family members. Um Mama PDF was a real character. Wow. Wow. And then um he had a younger sister named Lil Sauce. <laughs> Lil Sauce? Yeah. Was she a SoundCloud rapper? <laughs> <laughs> oh my god, I wish. <laughs> no, she was just sassy. What was Lil Sauce's deal? Uh she would just like would pop in and just like roast Dimitri to shreds and then leave. And that was the whole thing. <laughs> so she was like Megan from Drake and Joe. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> 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 she'd bob her head in you're a boob and then like <laughs> pop out like really <laughs> okay number three um oh goodness i'd say um uh, mama pdf would be like the other one because she okay. actually you know there how there's a paragraph about mama pdf reconnected with louise's mom and got her you actually um, wrote that in that is like an actual it was an actual scene where mama pdf pdf was telling dimitri about like getting louise's digits or whatever so that was like actually a scene so did you write a lot of bradley briggs Mm -hmm. or bethany briggs depending on which orientation that's not what i meant to say depending on whatever (laughs) depending on which year we did it yeah um why did i say orientation (laughs) Orientation. (laughs) but um did you write a lot of that narration character based on scenes that you had to cut? Like, did you make mm. that character summarize a lot of what was going to be explained in a more, I hate to call it this, but voluptuous kind of yeah. episode? Um, I did that, like, I'd say when it was deemed necessary because obviously when i cut okay louise's um like louise's mom's whole plot line about the pregnancy like i didn't have to add that back in because that wouldn't make any yeah. sense yeah. but for instance like i'm trying to think she just like drops it in yeah. at the end by the way my mom had a baby like, <laughs> like it would make absolutely no sense <laughs> but bradley's saying it yeah like... louise your mom's pregnant <laughs> like at the end <laughs> but i'm trying to think that i think i did when necessary but not like a huge amount bradley was there as like a way f- she she he whoever was there because my mom read the script and said this is only like makes sense and is funny when you explain it to me you should add a narrator voice in and so that's why i did that so we can owe that to my mom character to tina yeah shout out to tina <laughs> <laughs> wow well i mean it it did really yeah like wrap the show together. yeah it, it was added really nice. some nice dimension too with the fact like breaking the fourth wall and stuff too now i'm coming up with a bunch of i like a bunch of questions here but i'm coming up with so many just like yeah, as you're talking and keeping away. them in the back of my mind uh one why two who three <laughs> what no um how when not uh, where <laughs> was it good to see so we did dimitri for all the people that are listening to this and don't know jack shit about the show um <laughs> we did dimitri two years in a row yes. we did it with uh, an original cast and then we did it with another cast later yes was it helpful to run it through that first time and see it on the stage to make the changes that you did when we did the second run through um I'd say, yeah, definitely. And um, I feel like I have to mention Morgan, the director of Dimitri 2 in this. Um, She's on next week. Yeah. So she'll you'll get like the director's side too, probably. Yeah. Um, it was helpful um, as like an AD to definitely, yeah, see it before and to work out some kinks. And yeah, of course it was. Because that means we had 
like all of that time that we did it the first time we could be thinking about ways that it could be better um and all of that mattered for like before we did like before we brought it to festival it was nice to have extra time to think about it yeah and and then you also did some changes based on who was cast in those roles yes i did which was so perfect because (laughs) then all the lines like fit the person very very yeah um okay i'm gonna move away from this like not being good enough and everything even though i have like four thousand questions but we only have i think it's like an hour or something i don't know what i committed to um me neither so (laughs) i don't know what i committed to so if you have one what is your biggest pet peeve when it comes to seeing other people's written works and your own written works okay um Oh, goodness. I feel like for my own, it probably has to be. Mm. I'm sorry, I'm thinking. No, it's fine. I mean, it probably has kind of a weird question. Yeah, it is. I'm trying to think because I really honestly I kind of feel like, I, you know, those like stupid tropes that like people have in movies of like, I like love those. So I'm trying to think of things that annoy me and I honestly can't. <laughs> so you're, so you're kind of just a fan of all yeah. styles of writing. Like I can't, oh, never mind. I found something. Okay. I hate when people like in. Good. That makes it interesting. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And when in books and stuff, when people just write, like I like a good metaphor, but I hate when they're like ridiculously long and go on for pages and then you like forget what people are writing about. That drives me crazy. Like when they're really intricate metaphors. Thank you. Yeah. Yes. I, that it drives me crazy. I hate when people like or when people describe something. Yeah. Down to like the molecule. Like <laughs> the atoms smelled like pixie dust in the wind yeah like just, we don't need to know that much like just exactly. say there was a dusty piano in the corner yeah like <laughs> it just yeah also it's oh my god but I, um i hope my uh literature teacher doesn't hear this though because <laughs> that's that'd be bad <laughs> yeah, shout out to the, their literary liter, little literary literary teacher um but is that the biggest pet peeve that you see in your own writing? No, because I don't do that because I don't like yeah. it. <laughs> <laughs> so do you have one that you like? I'll reframe the question so it yeah. makes a little bit more sense. If you're writing something. Yeah. And you write the whole thing, like one sitting, like a scene or like a couple yeah. scenes of like, damn, that was great. Then you come back and you read a part over that you just hate with all every cell of your body you're just like Ugh, what does that part look like i hate when i fall into like why a like young adult tropes that other people have have you read like any young adult where there's like oh yeah yeah sometimes i'll fall into them um and i like hate rereading it and being like oh my god for the listeners of this like give us some So, okay, sometimes there's a lot of young adult that's based around, like, strong female characters, but, like, specific females characters who have to, like, save the world or something, and they have, like, very similar characteristics as in other books. Like, no shade, I still love that, but I hate, like, if I fall into that kind of trope, even though I said I like tropes, but I feel like sometimes it's overdone. Do you know, like... So you're really... Okay, so just to sum up what you said about other people's works and about your own. Yeah. Really what you hate is unoriginality. Yeah. You don't like to read the same thing that everyone's done. Or you don't like to yeah. read similar things to what other people do and fall into other people's categories. Yeah, but I also still sometimes like it. I don't know. <laughs> well, I mean, we all have the exceptions to every like, single rule. Yeah, that's the that problem. Because I do... I. T- don't like following into certain tropes but others i'm like fine with like romantic comedy plots love that keep that forever (laughs) (laughs) um okay so now you like writing on your own correct so 
Does that ever get like lonely or nerve wracking? No. Ever? Mm. Like just being alone. Like I know that sometimes if like being alone with just your own thoughts for as long as it takes to format a scene, can that ever get like kind of maddening? Honestly, I love it. I don't really? find it lonely at all. It's super weird. Oh. I really like time by myself. Um, so writing just kind of plays into that cuz normally I just completely zone out when I'm writing too. If I get really in like in deep, I'll put on music um and then I can like write for hours and like not feel time pass. It's great. Hmm. <laughs> so you kind of it's almost a way of to like would you say it's almost like the reverse? Like you can escape a stressful yeah. situation just by being alone oh, in your head? Oh, 100%. Yeah. All right. Now, you said you'd like to write alone. So yes. do you fear the idea of writing with other people? Yes, or I do. You, okay, so in your mind, do you think that that's a rational feel or, or an irrational it's feel? It's perfectly rational. <laughs> okay, take you through that then. <laughs> well, actually, no. I wouldn't... I don't like writing with people because I kind of, I don't like saying like controversial stuff almost. And I like pleasing people. Um, but when I'm writing, so like if I'm writing with someone, it has, to, it has to take like an active thought in my head of being like, I have to stand up for what I want the story to look like. Okay. So it, it stresses me out because I feel like I'll say yes to stuff, even though I might not necessarily like a hundred percent agree i'll be like okay they probably i don't know i just have trouble like agreeing to stuff because you I, have trouble with confrontation yeah about being like saying like oh i want this character to do that and if i didn't like that i'd have trouble being like um i'm not sure that is a i like that because i don't because <laughs> i know if they like it i wouldn't want them to do that to what i think so i feel bad well that's yeah considerate of you Thanks. now <laughs> <laughs> now for your writing pieces that you do on your own and like dimitri or like whatever you're working on now how do you get inspiration for that um or how do you get inspiration to write anything yeah well sometimes i'll just save up ideas like i'll just come up with something do you have like a journal that you write down in i write or? in my notes in my oh, notepad okay. yeah um or i'll just like save it in my head and i usually think about something for like it's like ongoing as you probably know when you're like, cause you, you do that kind of stuff. You know how you just yeah. kind of like save stuff and you'll like yeah. elaborate on it. And then eventually for me, I take a while and then I'll actually like write it down. Now when, when you're writing in your notepads, do you write like a basic plot line, a little idea of like a character or do you just write like a title of a show and then elaborate on it later? I usually write a short blurb of just like explaining like w i don't know so just like a few words to like rejuvenate my mind of what i was thinking before or if i come up with some lines and if i'm like working on a piece actively and i come up with character lines i'll write those out too so it's just like whatever comes okay so what what in your normal life gives you that inspiration to write in your phone um honestly anything i could just be usually if i'm just like i don't know it comes in random spurts i don't i don't know how to explain it <laughs> all right just well come randomly. then we'll focus on what your like award-winning play was so how did you get the inspiration to write a 90s sitcom about high school kids uh well i actually okay so I s wrote a monologue my freshman year um, that had like some high school characters in it. And then I decided that I wanted to write a show at some point. Do you remember what that monologue was called? It was called Fetal Pig. I'm sorry. What? <laughs> oh, it's... It was uh, called... No, no, no. Say that again. I just want to see if I heard... Fetal Pig. Fetal Pig. <laughs> yeah. Do you remember any lines from it? I do, but I don't know all. if I should go in. <laughs> Can you give us like 
just like one joke or one little thing that you have in fetal pig um this fetal pig really brings out your eyes brown <laughs> <laughs> okay sorry that was that was deviating from the topic i continue. feel like shout out to morgan she knows that og catalog. <laughs> she'll know it as ugly fat ass martha though so it's fine <laughs> <laughs> ugly fat ass martha yeah. oh my god so we have fetal pig ugly fat ass martha brad yeah um they're irrelevant though okay they don't matter anymore so take me back to dimitri how did you oh yeah um, after after realizing that you wanted to write a show where did that go i wrote like a little bit about those characters that was in that monologue were in that monologue oh my god i can talk and um i actually i don't know i feel like thank you for fixing my mic the name Dimitri JPEG actually came from, um, I was uh, going through memes online um, for some reason, and it was like two in the morning, and there was this meme of a kid who had a yearbook picture, and um, it said on his yearbook picture, Dimitri.jpg, and then his last name, and they're like, wondering if their parents named them this or if it was just like a typo or something i don't know why i thought that was the funniest thing i'd ever seen <laughs> so <laughs> this award-winning <laughs> 90s sitcom adaptation came from a meme maybe <laughs> that's beautiful thanks that i interrupted sorry <laughs> no no that's it <laughs> that's it well so you just so you, so you had an idea after writing the monologue, Fetal Pig, yeah, to get to write a ninety sitcom, and then you saw a meme, which made you laugh. Oh, actually, oh. there is more. I forgot. Good. Um, there was a joke going around, like in my friend group, about uh, like a like having a sitcom joke. We would just bring it up. Okay. It had like golf clapping. I don't really know, but it was like a kind of like a sitcom joke thing. And then okay. I was also like, oh, sitcom, that perfect. And then just kind of from that, okay. I'm making so much sense. <laughs> <laughs> I'm sorry. Um, no, you said that like out of the monologue, you got the idea to do the 90 sitcom. Yeah. Where did the monologue come from? Um,. I was sitting in an advisory one day and I was bored and I started writing. <laughs> that was so it. advisory boredom led to a monologue. That monologue writing that led to the 90 sitcom seeing a meme. Yeah. And an inside joke that it was a, that it was a sitcom with yeah. your friends developed into Dimitri JPEG. Yes. That's a little bit. I feel like it's not necessarily in that order. Just kind of like all together. It's like the rough outline of yeah, exactly. what went down. Yeah. Okay, so last two questions, and then we're gonna take a little break. Sweet. Um, number one is what's the biggest thing that writing as a person has taught you, and what's the biggest thing that you have yet to learn about writing? Oh, sweet, such a hard question. Um, I feel like I need to learn everything. I feel like I know like little to nothing about writing and that it's like a whole art that I've just barely like scratched the surface with. Do you think that exploring other genres of writing will teach you more stuff? Or, and are you excited yeah. to try other genres like yeah. horror? Or, like, I feel like I kind of um, I'm in a bad habit of reading like in the same genre and like very similar stories. So actually recently I've been trying to like get out of like the genres i stay in and trying to like expand but i'm i really haven't done much but i'm like hoping to because i know reading other stuff will definitely help and what's the biggest thing that writing has taught you already um i so i feel like it's not necessarily like one big thing but i feel like when i'm writing it just kind of makes sorts of what i already knew as like truths and 
Okay. Like in my heart, you know what I mean? Not to get yeah, sappy, but no, like get sappy. Yeah. This is your episode. Get sappy. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> but like <laughs> things that like I always like thought like things I believed in or I thought that were like right, I would just write stories and then I like look at them and I'm like, oh, okay, yeah, that's what I think. Like I write to like learn about what I think too, which is but also, yeah, that's selfish, but so know. you write to better understand your outlook on the world and yeah. the world itself yeah to get sappy yeah also for fun <laughs> oh well yeah i mean <laughs> i think yeah. that was a given um but so w- what the second question that i want to ask is what's the biggest thing that you would tell people who are like i want to start writing uh i'd say just to like start doing it that's like that's the yeah, hardest just- thing to do right yeah like just I, to sit down and start something <laughs> yeah well i'd just say like if you're staring at a blank page at first then just like write about your day or something or write something simple and then like just get, get your fingers moving because it doesn't really matter if it's good at first just to like get yourself started just go for it i guess all right yeah well everyone who's listening Hang out through the music. We're going to take a little break and we'll be back with Elizabeth Moore. Okay. Having a little bit more of the conversation. Sweet. Give us a sec, guys. Okay, guys. Hey. We're back. We already touched a lot on Dimitri, but guess what? You guys guessed it. Or you we have We have more Dimitri. <laughs> <laughs> um, Yay. Okay. So was there a fi- now i should preface this before we talked a lot about dimitri and if you're just joining us i don't know why you'd be just joining us now what the hell are you doing oh well welcome but like if anyways. you if you yeah. paused it and you're rejoining us we talked hey. about like writing and that's it <laughs> we just like explored a lot of aspects of of writing so if you yeah. haven't if you haven't heard that and you forgot a little bit you can back up a little bit um but we're going to talk about Dimitri, which you wrote and then co-directed. Mm, assistant directed. S- assistant directed slash like stage managed kind of. Kind of. For the fir- for like the first orientation of it. Yeah. I keep, say- I keep saying orientation. Orientation. And I don't mean to. Well, we, we, had, we had a stage manager, but like I helped with what was needed if it was needed. That yeah. kind of thing. Yeah. Yeah. Um, orientation i love i'm sorry i'm I'm not meaning to say it (laughs) i'm sorry i just um generation the first generation that's what i mean that's what i mean to say the first gen dimitri um but both times Mm -hmm. you handed it off to morgan alley hi morgan i love you to direct yes now was there a fear in your heart handing it off to someone else or were you i mean i know i know that you were probably very confident in morgan's ability but was there still a fear like you had been working on this for so long you're finally giving it out to the public you didn't know what would happen i so okay that's an interesting question i felt a little bit well first of all i was like really excited that anyone wanted to read it all i still can't believe that like that happened at all But I was a little bit nervous regardless um, of just like putting it out there. There was because um, there was like a lot of parts of myself that I put in. But I was I'd like trust Morgan with my life. And I was thought she would do a great job. And she did. So I think it worked out fine. But I was a little nervous, not like for her particularly, but just like putting it out there. But like it was fine. It like worked out. <laughs> now, once you saw it up there, either first gen or second gen, was there ever a time where you disagreed with what you had written versus what the characters were being portrayed as on the stage? Um, interesting question. Um, actually, I feel like <clears throat> I'm not going to say that like 100% of everything was what I pictured, but because it wasn't, but that was what I liked about seeing it was the fact that the actors would come up with stuff that I wouldn't expect um, and they made it their own. And I thought that was super awesome to see like different things. Like I would be like, Oh, I didn't think that um, Forrest would do that, but like, wow, it really fits the role. So 
Yes, but in a good way. Well, well thank you, because I played for us. Yeah. Um, okay. But, well, like, so would you say that watching that was just, it was kind of like you were an audience member finally seeing, like, yeah. stuff have I'm trying to figure out how to word this. You, well, basically, you just said that, you know, people were coming up with new stuff every Yeah, like, and Morgan every was adding all of her glorious directing stuff, too. So, yeah. like... So, for you, was it kind of like, even though you had spent from freshman to junior year with this show, it was still surprising you? Yeah. Was that... It was. It was. It was. It was like different things um, that people did and the stuff Morgan I added, which made it like awesome. Um, like just people putting their own take on it. Cause it, it's such a collaborative experience that I knew going into. Um, but yeah. like being a part of it, definitely like everyone was putting their own stuff on it. So, yeah. Yeah. Now, when was the moment you realized that the story of Dimitri JPEG and all of his friends like Forrest or Judy or Louise or Jamal needed to be told? Um, I feel like the need was more for myself to um, like put my take on a sitcom and it, it was just like I felt like that that's something that I wanted to do. So therefore that story, particular story was told, I guess it was just something I wanted to do. It was something that now stop me if I'm wrong, but you're wrong. No, (laughs) (laughs) Uh, (laughs) they'll stop you right there. (laughs) 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 Sorry. (laughs) It was something that you had kind of, been with and you had seen and you wanted other people to see it yeah i did want other people I, to see it i'm like <laughs> oh my god my brain just like shut off that's okay that was wow that's how i felt uh, <laughs> uh earlier when i was talking about something that you asked me well but then i, guess, I regained i guess we're equal now yeah or even. we both had a moment yeah i'm just gonna move on to the next question okay, pretend that didn't happen fine. oh can we edit that out please thank you yeah hi future editing you don't need, henry. To, you don't need to edit that out it's okay oh bye um, future henry <laughs> editing so out of all the characters what character did you really like identify as like what was the character that was really like the most like wow that's me that's kind of quirky or weird i have two is that acceptable? No, that's not acceptable. Don't, no, it's, 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 your sh- it's your show. It's your show. Um, Bradley slash Bethany. Okay. Is the narrator? Yeah, as I had mentioned um, earlier, if you have stay tuned to this long, hey, um, my mom said that I should add in like a narration voice, and that was so that was me reading it and then saying like, oh, what, what's something that I would say about this that like when i react to different shows and so that was like more my voice in a way like very amped up though um okay and, and then what was the second character that you identify as um probably or not identify as identify, identify with. yeah <laughs> <laughs> i identify <laughs> oh my god i i probably say um mm, probably Dim- i dimitri when i first wrote it is there a difference between Dimitri, the vinyl product, and the Dimitri when you first wrote it? First wrote it as in, I don't feel that way anymore as I did when uh, I wrote okay. it. Yeah. So like d- the just, character didn't change. You no. grew as a person. Yeah. Kind of away from that character. Yeah, I guess so. I guess you could say that. <laughs> I love pretending that I'm like this really awesome, uh, like down famous to earth person. writer. Yeah. <laughs> down to earth person, yeah. Now, what was the hardest thing to write about Dimitri JPEG? There's a spoiler warning here. I don't actually know what she's going to say, but it's there's a spoiler warning if you haven't seen oh. the show. Um, the hardest part, actually, I think... Ooh, okay. 
Again, big spoiler warning. Um, now I feel like I need to add a spoiler. <laughs> no, you don't. Forrest is gay. <laughs> <laughs> You've been spoiled. Yeah. Actually, that scene in particular, um, I was afraid that this um what the content i was writing would seem inauthentic um and in per- particularly in that scene um when he uh forrest comes out as gay i've like can't i you can't personally relate uh, yes but it's something i wanted to include but i didn't want it to seem fake in any way so i was really nervous that people who have actually been through that kind of um circumstance would be like well that's not how it happened for me and be like that's not it at all but no one ever said anything like that so i'm hoping it's fine now you have friends in the ltbtq community yes. did, did you contact any of them to get their stories before writing I didn't um, contact anyone for that reason, but I've had a lot of people that have, I've had conversations about that um, in the past of people telling, either coming out to me or like talking about their coming out story. So I feel like I already had some knowledge about that. A some like bit. some background experiences yeah. to derive it from. Yeah, exactly. Now, do you think that did you when you started this and when you started the I don't know, journey if you want to call the it journey. That, the journey that sounds so luxurious um of from that fat ass martha monologue to <laughs> fat ass martha oh my god <laughs> sorry that's sorry um don't throw a pillow at me sorry um but when you started the, the whole journey of Dimitri JPEG, did you think that it would be as big as it was? <laughs> like, did you think that it would be like an award winning show? This is such a funny question. Did you though? Well, here's the thing. I don't know. I feel like being, I, I don't know. <laughs> I feel like being on this podcast, it like makes it seem like it's like, it was cool, but I don't know. It's, it was like don't hold back just like talk about it uh i was hoping that it would be successful i was lucky enough to have people that believed in it that i'm really happy about um like morgan and obviously our um drama director and i was really happy to see that people got really into it and i don't think i could have like ever imagined that but yeah i don't know i guess i didn't does it that I mean, how it would. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Sorry, you can go now. I guess. How? No, no, finish your thought. That that was it. I just didn't know that it would be as successful as it was. But also, I feel weird saying that because it was still just a high school show. You know what I mean? I don't know. I mean, it was, but thanks. It was still. It's still really good. Thank you. <laughs> Um, and I'm not just saying that that's like an unbiased opinion. Oh, and I, I'm not or just really biased. I'm not, <laughs> I'm not just saying that because I acted in it and I'm friends with the writer and, <laughs> and the, director the director and, and all the people twice. that were in it. Yeah. And I was casted in <laughs> the same role twi- and went to the school in the and, like, festival. and got an award for it's, being you're in the not show. Just saying that. Congratulations I'm not just saying that because I'm, that, thank by you. The way. <laughs> um, I have it like framed in my room. Um, oh, mine's on my fridge. <laughs> Frage. Frage. Um, but I'm not just saying that because I'm obviously very biased to, for the show. Um, I'm actually saying that because like the first time that I sat down and I read it um, up with you, Alper, Morgan, and Lillian. Yeah. And I still remember that. And I just sat down because like at that time I was, you know, I was... I was like a young little dinky boy. So my mom was like late picking me up. Yeah. So I went up there and I sat down with you guys and I read for Forrest for the first time. Mm-hmm. Every single thing that I like, I remember literally saying out loud, like in my head, looking out loud in my head. That doesn't out make loud any in sense. your head. That's so great. I remember saying very loudly in my head, um, which I'm going to 
that little sentence I'm going to come back to in a second because I need to tell you something about that. Okay. Um, I remember like reading through the script. I got to scene five. I looked it over and I was like, oh my, I'm, I'm gay. <laughs> like that's weird because yeah. uh, like I personally can't connect with that like coming out because I'm, yeah. I'm a straight guy. Yeah. And <laughs> contrary to popular belief, I'm a straight guy. Um, and also, that was the first real experience of, like, dramatic acting mm-hmm. that I had. Because, I mean, Forrest was still kind of, like, the comic relief character. Yeah. But, I mean, every single character in that was kind of a comic relief character at some point. Exactly. But yeah. Forrest, I think, was kind of the comic relief. Um, or at least I perceived him as the comic relief. Mm-hmm. Um but that was the first like dramatic acting that I had done of doing the coming out scene and then scene seven where I'm like confronting Kat like, yeah, hey, told you I'm gay. He ran out. That was weird. <laughs> Let's talk about that. <laughs> Let's talk about it. <laughs> <laughs> Do like the ret and link thing. Yeah. Let's talk about exactly. that. Exactly. <laughs> but um, just going back to earlier, a little fact that I learned is that whether you shout or whether you whisper in your head, it is all the same volume. Yeah. And it that kind of broke me for a little while. Oh, shit. I'm thinking about it now. Like, no matter what you do, it's all actually the same volume. Listeners, take a moment. Try it out. <laughs> I am right now. That's why I went silent. Wow, that's kind of messing me up. It's a, it's really weird, right? I'm trying to scream and it's just holding me back. Yeah, it's 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 maddening, right? Like if you think about yeah. it for long enough, it's really really weird. Yeah. Okay. So that was all my questions about Dimitri. Other than one last one. Okay. So Dimitri JPEG. It was a success in the drama fest. Thank you. Characters from it and writers from it. Yeah. Meaning you won awards for it it went on to have two generations of a cast yes and the script went through many 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 revisions yeah from freshman to junior and then from junior to senior and then on and on and on years (laughs) i'm getting to the question don't worry okay I I believe in you so, so much. <laughs> when was the moment that was the saddest for you realizing that, like, it had all kind of come together and you'd, I mean, not really the saddest for you, but yeah. when was the moment when, or what feeling did you feel when you felt the feeling of, I don't have to touch this ever again like this is this is theirs like it's their characters now it's their stage yeah it's their lighting cues it's their lines what was the feeling of wow this is done oh goodness um the first or the second time (laughs) the second time the second time um it's probably for me either I don't know, it's a weird question. I feel like it's good though, don't get me wrong. It was it's probably either the first read through or the day of Drama Fest morning. Cuz I feel like there's both kind of some like closure and hearing, well, hearing everyone read for the first time. There's like magic in that. Um, Morgan and I, like after we like got so excited cause we were just like, Oh my God, that was amazing. And then, so what was the, what were those on from the first, on those two moments that you described yeah. the first read through and then the final product were done. Yeah. What was the feelings that you felt in those two moments? Asking me about feelings. Yeah. <laughs> so the first one, it's. Like hearing the read through, I feel like there's just a lot of excitement involved because um, there's like 
endless potential and so many ideas that have yet to be thought that like are really exciting the idea of like putting together a show so that kind of thing and the feeling like having a really good feeling about it turning out well was there too and just like hoping that it would be like as amazing as we thought it could be and if you had to put a name on that good feeling what would it be excitement probably excitement yeah okay um continue sorry and then the other one was probably probably also excitement but a little bit more as well closure knowing that um besides the fact that um i forgot who i think it was morgan came up with the idea of using shoelaces um to do the signs besides that happening there was nothing else that we could have done to uh make the show any different um yeah because like you had it a was deadline the, end of the process yeah and a deadline man <laughs> always coming back a deadline um, but was it a bittersweet moment when it finally, when curtains closed? Was that bittersweet? Yes. I feel like for drama fest, it was mostly sweet because we all came out in our beautiful t-shirts and just got to like soak in everything. But then when we performed it like a week later, I don't even remember it was definitely like those do we do, uh, how many ever times we did it the second time like, twice oh twice yeah both two of those nights like later. after yeah yeah i couldn't even remember him so forgetful um those were like more bitter sweet than just sweet because it was like okay it's actually ending now like we got off like the high of like having fun and performing for like an awesome crowd and then like feeling like okay this is it, I guess. <laughs> and now where do you sit with it? Um, I think of it uh, just as like something that I'm really feel really happy to have happened. And I'm like pretty at peace. I still want to work on like getting it published at some point. Um, so that is on the back of my mind. But I mostly feel like, okay, it's time to like work on something else now. That was fun. But time to like try to sharpen up the craft all right and do you have any other projects you want to talk about or do you want to keep everything kind of like secret until they're released out in the world um i'll keep them on the dl i'd say okay all right well on that lovely note we're gonna take one more break then we're gonna have a little game game that we <laughs> That's so fun. <laughs> I didn't know I'd get to play games on this. Yeah, there's always a game. There's the a game. The show. Okay. Yeah, we're going to do a game. All right. Give us a sec. We'll be right back. Bye. Okay, guys. We're back. We got Elizabeth Moore. Hello. If you just took a break from the podcast, we talked about all Dimitri JPEG. We talked about all the ins and outs of writing. I've caught a second wind of excitement. Yay! And now we're going to go to the the game. So basically, I have made little signs with all the characters of <laughs> of Dimitri JPEG on them. I know that we're talking a lot about Dimitri JPEG, but seriously, it's <laughs> it's so good. Um, so just to specify what we're kind of doing here, I actually wrote down a perfect little description okay, of the awesome. game. And I'm going to read it. If I can ever get my mic to like cooperate and do what yeah. I want. Okay. So I, ca- I wrote it like I was pitching a sale. <laughs> it's time to name the person that is most like the Dimitri character. The premise of the game is that I'm going to, I'm going to show you the name of a character from the show and you have to name a person within your friend group and someone famous so it's two per two people per sign that that person best resembles that character's like personality okay and And you have to say why you chose them all right watch me just name everyone who played them so first (laughs) we're gonna start off with bradley briggs the narrator of the of Dimitri JPEG and okay. the honest goodness truth. So I'm trying to think. I f- uh, like. Can it be when you say celebrity? Can it be like 
a character who's like in a famous movie or something? It can be anyone. All right, I'm gonna say. Well, actually, actually, what? No, it has to be a real person. Oh, can I tell you who I was gonna say? Yes, I was gonna say Caesar Flickerman from the I, Hunger Games. <laughs> I see that. Okay. Okay, a person, a famous celebrity person. Oh, yes. okay. Who's? Who, do you know the um the guy who um hosts the Bachelorette and the Bachelor? Yes. Him. I forgot his name. He's Bradley Briggs. Maybe. That's the only person I could come up with. Okay. And who among your friend group is Bradley Briggs? Am I allowed to say Christian? You're allowed to say Christian. <laughs> Even though he played Bradley Briggs. I feel like Christian. He was cast very well. Or Lexi. <laughs> Christian or Lexi. All right. Yeah. Okay. Okay. Next one. Okay. We're going to keep moving. We're going to keep moving. Now, keep namesake hot. of the show, Dimitri freaking JPEG. Okay, um, for a celebrity, ooh, um, I don't know, <laughs> who's a nerdy celebrity? Do you have any ideas? Can I cheat? Phone a friend? Do you have any? Uh... I don't know why, but I thought of Seth Rogen. Sure, I'll take that. <laughs> he's not really what? a nerdy guy, but he's just displayed as a nerd a lot. Yeah. In his, like movies and stuff. That's solid. Uh, I feel like... I don't know. I feel like Mike is like Dimitri in some ways, but also like I don't want to say Mike because I don't want to do that for the whole thing. Okay. Um, I'll say <laughs> myself, circa 2011. Okay. Next. We have Judy. What I was waiting for. Okay. For friend group, Morgan. Done. Shout out. Too yeah. Easy. E- too easy. And for a car- um a celebrity, I'm going to say um someone like sassy who is on the disney channel at some point or like nickelodeon i'm gonna say okay. someone like in that realm let's say uh the younger sister from drake and josh that we mentioned earlier except the actual actress okay <laughs> Miranda Cosgrove. Thank that's, you. That's I couldn't remember her name. <laughs> that's random. Jamal. I don't know if that lines up. Whatever. Jamal. Okay. I was gonna say Naya Rivera. <laughs> I don't know who that is. Santana Lopez and Glee. Oh, I like that better. Let's use that. Okay. Next. Okay, Jamal. I'm gonna say that uh Will Smith. Oh yeah. <laughs> yeah. Like a thousand percent, <laughs> yes. And then I'm gonna say for a friend group. Mm, Jamal, let's say uh, Meredith. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> what? Kind I of. I don't hate that. Like I see it. She would. No, I don't know if she would like that. She won't. Okay, but we're moving on. Okay, it's Meredith. <laughs> Louise. Sorry, Meredith, if you're listening to this. Louise. Okay. Um, she's like. Uh, I know these are supposed to be fast. Let's go like. Taylor Swift? I don't know. Okay. Is that solid? New Taylor Swift or old Taylor, like bad reputation Taylor Swift no. or like red Taylor Swift? Like like the Taylor Swift like video red. where she's dressed up as a cheerleader? Yeah. <laughs> that one? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that one. Okay. Um, and then for a person. Oh, these are this is so tough. I I guess I don't know. Mm, I, uh, I Sarah's kind of like her, I guess. I don't know, but the good parts of Louise. Let's say that Sarah's the good part of Louise. Okay, next. These are so hard. We have Cat. Cat. Okay, Cat is actually Leah. Don't at me. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Not in a good way. In a good way. Oh my god. <laughs> and you just said not in a good way. <laughs> no, I said not, and then space in a good way. Like not. Okay. I, okay. I meant like not shade because i love cat and in a good way leah's like that oh god i don't like i don't know okay and then i th- immediately thought like mm, who did i immediately think oh my goodness do you have any ideas i can't think of anyone i have an idea but it's it's your show you already used phone a friend you, phone, you can't use it more than phone, once home phone 
No, you can't. Like E.T. You can't. You oh, but I don't know. Celeb- celebrity. Who's cat? Oh, God. I'm not good at celebrities. Oh, I haven't used the Kardashians yet, though. Yeah. Which Kardashian? Shit. Piss. I'm going to go with um, Kim. Cool. And finally. Forest. Forest. Um, it's not you, but kind of you. It's, it's, it's you. It's kinda. me without the gay. Yeah. I'm gonna go But also go with, with some of the just it's like just, without it's just well just br- let's just say broad. okay, just to summarize me as a person, every single g- thing about me is gay, except for my person I mean not personality, sexuality. Except for my person Except for my sexuality. So you. Okay. And Forest is Come on, come on, come on. I don't know. This is so hard. I know. I don't know. What That's do you the point. think? No, you already used phone for you can't you have no more. There's no more lifeline. Forest is just like I can't think of any celebrities right now. He's like someone who's talks a lot and eats food. There you go. A celebrity who is on a show. I, I have I have one. You do say it. Neil say Patrick it. Harris. He's a little oh, bit like Neil well, Patrick perfect. Harris. Perfect. That works. Okay. That was the game. That was so hard. That, <laughs> it was supposed to be hard. Um, that was expert level difficulty. Yeah. Well, you wrote the show. So I thought. You thought it would be easy? No. Yeah. You think I be. know anything? I don't. <laughs> All right. Well, the last question that I have for you before we wrap it up okay did you have fun on the show yeah i did i had a lot of fun awesome quick shout out to everyone involved thanks for helping and making everything happen especially shout out to morgan alley for being an awesome director i just want to add that so it's like in there i was gonna ask you if you had anything to say to the people like as your final thing but do you want to add on to that or was that kind of it no i mean it's just like Oh, yeah. Give, a, give your final statement. It was a really f- fun experience, and I honestly cannot believe that it actually happened, and then I got to be involved with, like, people wanting to be a part of it, and it ha- it was so fun for, like, my high school experience, and I guess, like, thank you to everyone who helped out and was a part of it. I just said that, but, like, it really, like, meant a lot to me to have it happen. And it's, yeah, that's it. Also, it inspired me to, like, follow my dreams. <laughs> I guess I'll end that with that. All right. And to follow the thank you train. Thank you all for listening to this yeah. episode. If you made it this far, damn. Yeah, damn. We are at, I don't even know the time card, but we've gotten 2,032 beats per minute. So Sweet. we're around there. <laughs> um. So... Thank you for listening. Thanks Thank you, for Elizabeth, for being the first guest on the show. It's so fun Thank you. Uh, to other people that might want to be on it. If Henry asks you, you should do it because he gives you seltzer. So there you go. <laughs> That's the only thing. That's then. the only pitch for this. You get some seltzer. All right. Well. Thank you once again. Thank you. I'll see you on the next episode of the station. Well, not you, but all the listeners. Well, Hopefully, yeah. to the next episode of the station. If you want to support the show, like it. You get it. Patreon. Get it. <laughs> so go fund me. Go fund me on. Uh, go fund me on Patreon. <laughs> Just Love com- that. Combo. Combine the two. <laughs> I'm sorry. Next week we have Morgan Alley. Woo! She's we're cool. We're gonna do that, and we're gonna talk about directing and photography and like what it means to be a sassy bitch in new jersey yay yeah all right see you then guys bye bye tanacon what kissing booth really smug honey music wow big dick energy and so much more elizabeth moore was also yes i was a guest on the episode that i'm talking about but what episode am i talking about oh dot 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 Another Semicolon Studios affiliated podcast hosted by Morgan Alley and Henry O'Brien. Link in the description down below.